thank you, uh, first of all, to Neville and Ofa for inviting me to come and talk today. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for coming along. I mean, it's a really fascinating event. I've been struck so far by how unwarlike lots of the images that we've seen so far have been. And in that vein, I present to you uh, my image of a potato. Um, I called, well, I, I chose this image in particular because I think it captures the idea of translating conflict particularly well. This is a photograph taken by an official Islamic State uh, propagandist, uh, a photographer, a photojournalist, if you like, uh, in Iraq in 2015. And yeah, it's a photograph of uh, a potato, but it's also much more than that. And I'm going to try and convince you, explain to you why it is much more than that. Um, I think if we kind of walk back a little bit and look at the overall uh, output of the Islamic State in the last few years, I mean, obviously, there's lots of iconic images, possibly more iconic images to have come from this group than uh, any other before it, whether it's the beheadings, whether it's a guy dressed in black standing over a, a, a man who's about to kill wearing orange, or whether it's uh, the big mushroom cloud that you see after a suicide operation, or indeed a convoy in Libya with a big black flag of the Islamic State flying in the background. All of those things, yes, they are the Islamic State. All of this is the Islamic State. But so too are images like this one, which was drawn from a photo report um, which tells a, a broader story, kind of a piece of documentary, uh, about uh, agriculture in this particular part of Iraq uh, in this particular time of the year. Now, I'm going to break down the image and uh, try and walk you through it to, to try and kind of disaggregate some of the meaning within it. I think a useful way to do this is to start with the caption. All Islamic State images have captions like this one. This one in particular reads, Jani Mahasul al Batata fi Zauba. And that translates roughly to uh, collecting the fruits of the potato harvest in Zauba. Now, Zauba, I checked it this morning, is one hour and three minutes outside of the center of Baghdad. Um, it's in a uh, place that was controlled by the Islamic State for uh, about eight months or so. Uh, somewhere that it puts quite a lot of effort into doing the whole bureaucracy thing, playing at being a state. And this was one of many photo reports to emerge from there where it was saying, look, this is the Islamic State. This is what we're doing. We're not just a fighting organization. We are an organization that is providing. Uh, it's probably also relevant to note that the word Janni there, it's also uh, got some Quranic uh, connotations as well. It refers to... Um, the uh, Surah Al-Rahman, the 53rd uh, uh, verse in that, where an individual is describing how Allah, how God, uh, essentially created fruits for mankind, created vegetables, created everything for mankind, for the purpose of mankind, for the purpose of this chosen community. So again, by describing this in this way, the Islamic State isn't just saying, look, here's a potato. It's saying, look, here's a potato that is growing in this particular way, in this particular season of divine abundance. And it is for you, the chosen people, you supporters of the Islamic State. Now, just to the right of that, you'll see uh, a little logo, uh, calligraphic logo. And then underneath that, Al Janoub. This denotes that this is from the Wilayat Al Janoub. Uh, so the, the, the Janoub province, South Baghdad province of the Islamic State. Now, there's lots of different provinces. Uh, they do all sorts of different things, but all provinces have their logos done in this particular calligraphic script. And it's interesting because the script itself is uh, it's called Jelly uh, Diwani, or Diwani Jelly. No, Jelly Diwani. And Jelly Diwani, of the many calligraphic scripts that there are, is, is particularly interesting in this context because it was developed... Uh, conceived of uh, under the great Sult uh, Ottoman Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent, the guy who took, uh, captured Constantinople, the guy who beat the Romans. This is a guy who the Islamic State uh, really, really want to emulate. And this is an individual that they're trying to, uh, to capture the essence of. I mean, obviously, this is just a logo, but it's also part of this broader, very strategic tape that the Islamic State has on all of its branding, operations. Now, the photo itself, um, as I said, it's part of a broader uh, photo report about all sorts of different agriculture. Um, I mean, this is not unique to Zauba, 
It's not unique to Walayat al Janub, not by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, just in the last six months, we've had uh, apple farms in Sinai, um, big sweeping uh, vistas of, of Somalia, uh, snowfall in Afghanistan, this kind of uh, very utopian, blissful idea of what it is to be in the Islamic State. It still comes out today, but nowhere near as much as it did in 2014, 2015. But the image itself, if we go back to this specific image, what I like about it in particular is the, the, the guy's glove. When I first saw it, I kind of thought, ah, oh, this must be uh, a, a soldier or something like that. The, the, the glove, the fingerless glove, just immediately said something military to me. But of course, it, it's not. This individual, I think, is probably the farmer, um, either that or a propagandist. But it looks like the photographer has just stood behind him just to the right to, to capture this particular image of a potato that has been very painstakingly uh, removed of, of all of its dirt, so you can see it in all of its potatoey glory. Um, but the image itself, again, going back to the broader context of the image and what it does, it, it frames the Islamic State in a way that we don't often think about. It frames the Islamic State as a provider, uh, as an organization that isn't just fighting, isn't just killing, isn't just trying to uh, change, well, not just change the world, but augment a, a revolution. It's also an organization which is thinking about the people over which it is ruling. And that may be kind of counterintuitive given what we know about it, but it's been happening for a very long time and it's still happening today. And what's going to be particularly interesting moving forward is how images like this translate in the coming months and years. Now that Mosul has fallen, Raqqa has fallen, uh, Mayadeen, Abu Kamal, Qa'im, all of these places that uh, were of great importance to the Islamic State. When it was in its heyday, 2014, 2015, when the state was, well, it really kind of looked like a state. Now, though, the whole propaganda operation has kind of shifted. It's recalibrated. No more is the Islamic State spending quite so much time on potatoes. It's much more focused on suicide bombing, uh, kind of skirmishes, the kind of stuff that you would expect to see. But that doesn't mean that this is no longer representative of the Islamic State as an idea. I think it actually becomes almost more important to it because what I'm seeing now, and I spend a lot of time not just on official uh, Islamic State channels, so looking at what they're officially saying, but looking at what the supporters are saying as well. So how they're trying to navigate themselves through this terrible time. And images like this, they pop up again and again, uh, not as formal, uh, formal things, but kind of organically. This is supporters of the Islamic State almost trying to paint the period of 2014, 2015 uh, as a, a golden age of the Islamic State, a new golden age of Islam. I mean, that's, that's how audacious uh, they are willing to go. So it's interesting. This image of a potato, uh, I think, is going to be one of the keys to the Islamic State legacy uh, in, in months and years to come. And uh, we ignore this potato at our peril. Thank you very much.